Well, hello all. Uh, it's good to fix our eyes on Jesus from a special location, so I thought I'd just let you enjoy the gentle sound of the ocean uh, as you look out over on a beautiful afternoon on the Australian coast uh, as we reflect on God's Word. So let me pray. Lord God, thank you for your Word. Thank you for your Gospel. Thank you for the beauty that surrounds us in this world. And help us to remember the unfathomable beauty of your son Jesus who sacrificed himself for us and so Lord we thank you and praise you in Jesus name we're going to keep going in uh, Matthew chapter 26 uh, I don't have my NIV translation with me so it might be a little bit different if you're following along in your own Bible uh, but I'm going to read from verse 57 to 68 Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had convened. Meanwhile, Peter was following him at a distance right to the high priest's courtyard. He went in and was sitting with the temple police to see the outcome. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false testimony against Jesus so they could put him to death. But they could not find any, even though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two who came forward stated, This man said, I can demolish God's sanctuary and rebuild it in three days. The high priest then stood up and said to him, Don't you have an answer to what these men are testifying against you? But Jesus kept silent. Then the high priest said to him, By the living God, I place you under oath. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said it, Jesus told him. But I tell you, in the future you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? Look, now you've heard the blasphemy. What is your decision? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spit in his face and beat him. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you? Well, here we come. Uh, to the climax of Jesus' confrontation uh, with the religious leaders of Israel. Uh, and the irony in this passage, as we've been pointing, uh, I think reflecting on in, in the last few um, reflections, is that it's the, the chief priests and the religious leaders think that they're conspiring against Jesus, which they are. But the irony is, as we've been reading the gospel, Jesus walked into their, uh, their grasp willingly. He went to the cross because he wanted to. He went to the cross because that was God's plan for how he was going to save us. And so here we have this confrontation and it, it, it's often been uh, reflected on how much of a uh, miscarriage of justice this, this trial actually is. Uh, the fact of the time of day that it took place, the, the false witnesses that came forward, the fact that Jesus didn't speak a lie and yet he was uh, found guilty. He had never done anything wrong, yet he was condemned. Uh, and it's in that climactic moment when the high priest calls him under oath. He says, by the living God, I place you under oath. Tell us if you are the Messiah. Uh, in some translations, of course, that might be the Christ. And we know that Christ is simply the, the Greek word for Messiah. It's not Jesus' last name. Uh, he wasn't Mr. Christ. It was his title. God's chosen King who had come to save us. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus replies, you have said it. Now, we might balk at that and say, is Jesus being a bit cryptic there? But no, he's not. Uh, it's, a, it's a very legal way of replying uh, an, an affirmative oath, if you like. It's basically, Jesus just said, yeah, I am. But it's what he says next that really gets them. And he says, but I tell you in the future, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Now, why did that get uh, the, the high priest all in a, in a tiz? <laughs> well, because Jesus is quoting 
and referring to a prophecy by Daniel. And you can read about it in Daniel chapter 7. And in this prophecy, one like a son of man approaches the Ancient of Days and takes his seat at the right hand upon the throne where he will rule and have dominion over the whole world forever and ever. And peoples from all nations will come and bow down before him. Right? This is a prophecy of the coming of the Messiah. This is a prophecy of the King of Kings. And Jesus has said, it's me. And there's going to be a time when that happens. When I will come again. And then it will be too late. Then you will realize the error of your ways. And this really uh, strikes at something that when, when it comes to Jesus, uh, the people uh, generally, in a popular culture sense, don't often realize um, is that Jesus made these bold claims. And when someone says, for instance, you know, oh, I like Jesus, not sure about his miracles. And all that stuff about dying on the cross, but you know, he, he was a good teacher. He was, a, you know, he taught how taught us how we should love one another and st- things like that. But the fact of the matter is, Jesus doesn't give us that option. When you read the Gospels, as we have been over uh, the, the fair chunk of this year, there are only three options that you can come to. And I think it was C.S. Lewis who first uh, posited this. Uh, conundrum, if you like, uh, in his book, Mere Christianity. You see, Jesus doesn't afford us and doesn't give us the option to say he was just a good teacher. Because if he was just a good teacher, then what he just said to the high priest is not true. In other words, he lied. So either he's a liar or maybe Jesus just thought it was true and it wasn't true. In that case, he's nuts. He's crazy. He was self-deluded. So either he's a liar, or he's crazy, or the final option, which is the truth. He is indeed the Lord. And if, and if when you come to understand that, that will change your life. Why will it change your life? Well. It's what it goes on to say. When the high priest tore his robes and he, you know, Jesus had blasphemed, you know, what's your decision? They answered, he deserves death. But that is not what he deserves. It's what you and I deserve. And so when we look to the cross, we look to a Lord who out of love is looking back at us and says, I did this for you. I'm dying the death you deserve to die so that you can have the life that I alone deserve to live. Jesus dies to take our sin so that we can be forgiven and have the certain hope of everlasting life with him. This is the gospel. What a great and glorious truth it is. So let's pray and give thanks to God that Jesus died the death we deserve. Lord God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he is indeed the Messiah, the one who came, the one who lived, the one who died, and the one who rose again, all for us. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to fix our eyes on him day after day, that our lives would be shaped by that love that you poured out on us, in Jesus. And Lord, we pray this for your glory and in his precious name. Amen.